Same time, Syria's state news agency claims that the Israeli Air Force launched missiles targeting a number of sites in and around Damascus, though no injuries were reported. Syrian air defenses again reportedly went into action and allegedly responding to that Israeli incursion, while Syria commonly claims to intercept missiles, though Israel maintains no comment. But to get into all the above, get into some of the latest, we're joined by Neri Zilber, journalist and adjunct fellow for the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, frequent guest of ours. Uh, look, welcome back, Neri. Widespread counterterror operations still going on in the West Bank. We're seeing this almost on a, on a daily and nightly, you know, uh, basis. You know, just the last day, the local wing of the Islamic Jihad, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Janine, released video that showed them targeting the Israeli town of Ganer, uh, just outside the West Bank. I think in one instance, even hitting a, a sofa in a living room with a bullet through the window. So uh, we're seeing, you know, roadside bombs stopped. There seems to be a wide range of threats still emerging from the West Bank every day. Uh, it's true. And we also have to put this into context. This has been going on now for over a year. For over a year, uh, last spring, as we remember, a spate of terror attacks inside Israel, uh, quite deadly, uh, targeting Israeli civilians primarily. And so in response, the previous government under Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid launched this wide counter-terror operation in the West Bank, primarily in the northern West Bank, in places like Janine, like Nablus. Uh, and it's been ongoing now under the new government, under Bibi Netanyahu. It's considered like a contiguous you know, operation effort it right is. now, since from over a year ago. From over a year ago, and we also have to remember, this is the largest Israeli uh, counter-terror operation and military operation in the West Bank for over 15 years, since the Second Intifada. So not a minor operation, and like you said, it goes on every day, every night, raids like we saw this morning in Janine. The interesting thing about the overnight raid in Janine, there was one casualty, as Jonathan mentioned. Uh, he happened to be a colonel in the Palestinian General Intelligence. Now, we don't know whether he was actively firing on IDF soldiers uh, and counter-terror forces, uh, or whether he was a victim. Uh, maybe he had been armed because he is a security official on the Palestinian side, but it is concerning. Um, again, this has happened before, but every time a Palestinian security official is killed or harmed, uh, that further deteriorates or destabilizes the standing of the Palestinian Authority and the role it needs to play uh, in Palestinian cities in the West Bank to uphold security and stability. What's thought to be a major concern right now is, you know, evolving capabilities, let's say, by northern West Bank groups, whether it be developing rocket capabilities, mortars, they're starting to shoot into Israeli communities. I know, again, we've seen this before. You mentioned 15 plus years ago, a lot of this was commonplace. Is there a sense now that there, you know, these, there's effort underway to, to change the game a little bit, to come at Israel in different ways? So the rockets are concerning, although uh, the video that they released a bit uh, a few days ago is very it's rudimentary. Very rudimentary, yes. very rudimentary yeah. and uh, this is the reason why Israel does conduct these operations. And also, Maintains by the way, a presence. Yeah. yes, in other places in the West Bank, the Palestinian Authority security forces also do their own role. Uh, they know that rocket fire, like we've seen now from Gaza for 20 plus years, uh, will not be in their interest either. Uh, I would take a slightly different approach in terms of the overall threat from these northern West Bank groups. I think they are, number one, very much on the defensive precisely due to Israeli military actions. Uh, number two, it's more localized organizations, uh, one or two, maybe three individuals with a, a assault rifle, uh, maybe trying to plant some bombs or uh, roadside devices. Uh, it's not the widespread terror network and industrial organization of suicide bombers, suicide vests, Thanks. deadly terror attacks like we've seen in years past. Uh, and I think that should also be uh, be understood. Uh, yes, it's a major security concern, but you know, taking pot shots at a settlement, not that difficult operationally. Not at all, uh, all, firing. all testament to the, to the ongoing operation you discussed, yeah. IDF activity day in and, and day out there. And it is interesting that most of the casualties on the Palestinian side and most of the friction, as it's called here, between Israeli forces and Palestinian militants happen inside Palestinian cities. Yeah. Uh, so we don't see, say, a cell going out and trying to uh, attack a settlement Very rare. Uh, writ large or taking a fight to them. Right. Or even last year, like we saw a cross border infiltration inside Palestinian cities, um, you know, with assault rifles in the middle of Nabrok, a city not too far away from right. there. Right. All this in the, just in the rear view mirror for us. Look, mm -hmm. a strike, alleged strike in Damascus, again. Uh, you know, remarkable, no casualties in this one. But look, it forces us to, to look at this arena as well and question, you know, are we looking at a potentially new chapter of aggression, dangerous threats coming out of Syria, given the diplomatic regional developments, Assad being welcomed back into the fold, Syria, you know, being less taboo of a subject around the Middle East, what are the concerns? So there's the uh, military aspect of it. Uh, nothing new. Israel has been striking targets inside Syria now for over a decade. What is concerning in terms of the military front of the north, and we have to take Lebanon and Syria as a yes. conjoined front, uh, is the ongoing threats by Hezbollah 
uh, to attack Israel or to possibly retaliate against Israel for even strikes inside Syria. Now, I don't expect them to retaliate for the overnight strike, but it should be uh, taken into account. Um, and then number two, politically and diplomatically, obviously the Assad and regime and Assad himself have been welcomed back into the Arab fold. The idea amongst the moderate Sunni Arab states, uh, whether Gulf states like Saudi Arabia and the UAE or Egypt, welcoming Assad back, um, hopefully moderating him okay. and at least giving him something that he might lose in terms for. of Gulf yeah, and Arab support vis-a-vis sure. -vis Iran yeah. and his Bala and its and his traditional allies. I think that's a it's a bet. It's a wager. I don't think the Arabs will come out ahead on this wager, uh, but they're trying. They're trying to bring them back in from the cold. Now we've about one minute left that we have on this. Look, I mean, it's been about six months for this new Israeli government, hard right government that's talked as tough as you can talk on security. Is there a sense that is you know? in terms from where I come from, a new sheriff in town when it comes to security policy towards the Palestinians or not necessarily? I think it's more of the same, more of the same and it's probably a good thing in terms of the composition of this current government. Uh, settlement construction in the West Bank I think is a slightly different issue, but in terms of yeah. military operational right. issues, we just saw a campaign in Gaza, what, a week or two ago, um, very similar to the campaign last August under a previous yeah. government and previous uh, campaigns under Netanyahu uh, with various, say, more centrist or moderate governments. Uh, so he is still very cautious, uh, Netanyahu is, uh, and so I think that's all for the good, uh, despite his allies in government. Yeah, not, not prone to military adventurism, not Netanyahu, at not, uh, despite, despite claims and perceptions otherwise. Look, Neri Zilbert, thanks for being with us. A lot going on, as always. My pleasure.